If you're a fan of old school bodybuilding, then make sure to check out Subs the Movie. Filmmaker Alex Ardenti explores the $40 billion sports supplement industry, delving into the origins, evolution, and current state of supplements used by millions of fitness enthusiasts worldwide, available at Amazon and Vimeo. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookham here, and today I'm going to detail the Bronze Era bodybuilding method as advocated from the original muscle builder and trainer, Earl Liederman. I have often presented the Bronze Era physiques and athletes on this channel, such as that would put most regular gym goers to shame these days, having developed such amazing physiques with no gyms or machines and no supplements, with the only tools being just regular home equipment and a diet of whole natural food. I've been asked time and time again to give a more detailed account of the programs used by Bronze Era athletes, and after reading Earl Liederman's book titled Muscle Building, I thought I would share the program found within, as it perfectly describes the complete Bronze Era method. Earl Liederman wrote many books and courses during the Bronze Era and produced hundreds if not thousands of outstanding pupils in the 1920s one being Simon Javierto, who I will feature in a later video. I just want you to see some of these photos which are found in Earl Liederman's book Muscle Building, and you will see yet another example of the incredible natural physiques that could be achieved back then before testosterone was even synthesized. Many of his students developed strong, well-proportioned and muscular physiques which would satisfy most gym goers today but which most gym goers can't even achieve. It is more amazing to know that they achieve this using just barbells, dumbbells, and cable sets like chest expanders. So let's look at the routine and bodybuilding method that Earl Liederman recommended for his students. As an important note, Earl, like most bronze, silver, and golden era trainers, recommended the double progression method. And again, this is the method that has worked for over a century and produced champion physiques in any era. This method advocates starting with a low rep range with a weight and increasing repetitions over time, after which the target rep range is reached, at which point the weight is increased and the rep range decreases again and the process repeats itself. It is also important to note that unlike Mark Berry's system of bodybuilding which advocated a single set for each body part worked, L. Liederman was one of the first trainers to advocate the set system, recommending that for each exercise at least two to three sets be performed in the 10 to 15 rep range for the upper body and the 20 to 25 rep range for the abdominal and lower body. Earl also recommended the use of at least one or two of each of the following exercises for each body part, training each body part twice or three times a week, with beginners practicing a full body routine, whilst intermediate and advanced athletes splitting the routine into upper and lower body splits. It is easy to see then how this system from the Bronze Era led to such outstanding natural bodybuilders and was later evolved further by the Titans of the Silver Era. The routine advocated by Earl Liederman was as follows. For the development of the neck, neck extensions and presses back, front, to the right, to the left, against the resistance of your hand and neck bridges were performed. Although working against the resistance of your hand is a time-tested method, neck bridges have proven to be detrimental to the health of your cervical spine, so I would not recommend these. For the development of the shoulders, chest expand or raises to the front, side and rear as well as pull aparts were used. Interestingly, I don't recall seeing presses being recommended. Development of the back, barbell deadlifts, wide grip chins, close grip chins, straight arm chest expander pull downs, lying face down extensions were all recommended. For the development of the chest, push-ups, of course, dips between bars or chairs, then weighted push-ups as well as weighted dips were recommended. Also, for ribcage expansion, only, this is the only exercise that was actually recommended by Earl Liederman, 50 deep full breaths a day after chest and leg work. For the development of the arms, especially for biceps, gymnastic ring work was recommended, chinning, barbell curl, chest expander one arm curls, dumbbell curls, concentration curls, as well as the sandal alternate curl. For triceps, handstands, hand balancing, handstand push-ups, dips, push-ups, one arm presses, 
chest expander, one arm triceps extensions from the front and rear, barbell presses and side presses were all recommended. For the forearms, especially dumbbell and barbell juggling was recommended and it's something, I guess it's a technique that has been lost since the bronze era. For the development of abdominals, sit-ups, leg raises, side leg raises, leg circling, jackknives, leg raises to overhead for organ conditioning and side bends forward, backward and to the side were all recommended. Development of the hip muscles, that is glutes and hip flexors, single leg raises, stair climbing and weighted stair climbing. And I've got to make a mention here of Bobby Pandur, who is well known from the bronze era to have used stair climbing to develop his legs and actually advocated the use of weighted stair climbing for the development of, of his own legs. And in particular, he would actually carry his brother up several flights of stairs. And in doing so, he developed fantastic leg musculature. For the development of the thighs, which we also just spoke about, on top of weighted stair climbing, body weight deep knee bends, elevated single leg deep knee bends on a table, barbell squats, or carrying a human and doing squats like that, Jefferson deadlifts and leg curls were all recommended. Finally, for the development of the calves, single-legged calf raises as well as barbell calf raises were recommended. As I have mentioned in the past, muscle control, the progenitor to artistic posing, was practiced by Bronze Era athletes, because if one does not learn to control the muscle, then how is one expected to pose artistically? Makes sense. It makes perfect sense when you think about it. I have talked about muscle control extensively on this channel, and it was practiced worldwide, including the Americas, Europe, and Asia. Max Six books were, of course, the gold standard texts and courses on the matter. So I do hope you have enjoyed watching this video on the bronze era bodybuilding method. And I hope that this video answers most questions regarding the training methods from that era. If you have enjoyed watching the video, please give the video a like, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section. If you're interested in learning more about the double progression system, hit me up for online coaching or check out my website for bronze era and silver era texts. They're all eBooks by L. Liederman, George Hackenschmidt and Sigmund Klein, who all promoted the double progression system during the Bronze Era, and of course, the many muscle control books by Maxic and others, as well as Silver Era courses covering the Silver Era stars, such as Reeves, Park, Ida, Grimmick, Goldberg, and Ross, all at www.goldenerabookum.com. That's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookum saying bye for now. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooken.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platts, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end of death 
of the entire food supplement industry. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it, got it. It's only vitamin. The right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician, you might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster? A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. That could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now, when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you harder, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. That does no, no way. I, that stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way. I'm not going to give you, it's going to kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have drank so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was going to explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me. 